Hi, I want to talk to you today about attachment styles. I've been saying for a while now that I would do this video. So I did a little bit of reading and finally got it done. And I'm going to talk mostly not about secure attachment. Secure attachment is what researchers have um, attributed to about 65% of the population. But um, I would venture to guess that there's more dysfunction than 35%. And so I'm going to talk about the, the different types of dysfunctional attachment styles. And if you talk about attachment styles, you have to talk to the uh, person in early years. A lot of people about attachment styles don't address that. <clears throat> and it was first brought to my attention by this book, Daughters of Madness, Growing Up and Older with a Mentally Ill Mother. And um, it's by Susan Nathiel. And uh, it talks about the uh, inconsistent mothering angle and the disorganized mothering angle that a lot of um, attachment style theorists don't discuss. So um, I'm going to try to blend together this, what I first learned and what I've since looked at on the internet and recognized uh, having looked at before on the internet and blend them all and talk about them as I understand them. So, um, and there are different theories, so I'm going to, sometimes it might sound like uh, there are more categories than there actually are. It's just more that there are different theories that have four categories each, <laughs> so they use different terminology slightly. So, um, but generally the, there are two types of anxious attachment, okay? So there's secure attachment. We're gonna do away with that. That leaves three different types. And um, the three different types are the result of inconsistent mothering, which results in insecure attachment, okay? So insecure, inconsistent mothering, insecure attachment. Inconsistent mothering, insecure attachment. There are two types of anxious attachment. There's anxious attachment preoccupied and anxious attachment avoidant. Okay, so anxious avoidant, anxious attachment preoccupied may want closeness but show hostility at the same time or try to be charming in an artificial way. They worry about relationships and abandonment and may become needy or dependent. The anxious attachment avoidant style keeps their distance, is not talkative, keeps busy with toys or activities, doesn't seek out close relationships, becomes dismissive in relationships, and largely is ca characterized by a lack of trust. Okay, so then you have, so you've got the two anxious attachments, the avoidant and the preoccupied. Then you've got disorganized mothering and disorganized attachment that results from it. Now, uh, the mother is disorganized and out of sync. And the child reacts by trying to control the mother, uh, mocking the parent, bossing the parent, or actually internalizing the role of the parent in the face of the parent being out of control and become the parent becoming a child and the child becoming a parent. These people in uh, older years in their relationships can be chaotic, insensitive, explosive, abusive, erratic, unpredictable, and sometimes charming. So what I found interesting, uh, revisiting something I had seen many years before, is there's a chart with avoidance as a y-axis and anxiety as an x-axis. Okay, so you have low anxiety, high anxiety, uh, low avoidance, high, high avoidance. So this is a comparison of avoidance and anxiety. So this cuts through into four quadrants. So in the upper left, you've got the secure attachment with low anxiety and low avoidance, right? Then beside it in the low avoidance and high anxiety category is the preoccupied. And that goes along with what we just said about People who have a preoccupied attachment style kind of um, uh, fixating on their relationships and how not to be abandoned. So that's high anxiety and low avoidance. And I will describe that low avoidance associated with the preoccupied style in a minute when I refer to a blog that I'm going to discuss at the end of this video. Um, but for now, I'm just trying to outline uh, the different... Uh, characteristics, the general characteristics of these four quadrants that have been put into this anxiety versus avoidant uh, paradigm. 
So low avoidance and high anxiety is the preoccupied, okay? High avoidance and high anxiety is the fearful avoidance. So there we go with a different designation. Fearful avoidant is not recognized universally. So high avoidance and high anxiety would be a fearful avoidant. Uh, avoidant, yes, I've heard of. Fearful, not so much. So this this uh, quadrant is called fearful avoidant, so it's using a different terminology. Then you've got high avoidance and low anxiety being the dismissing avoidant. Okay, so there's the fearful avoidant and the dismissing avoidant. The fearful avoidant has high avoidance and high anxiety. The dismissing avoidant doesn't have that anxiety level, but they have a high avoidance level. So that's the dismissing avoidance, dismissing avoidant. So that's one chart that I thought found really interesting, and I'm going to link it below. It's from How to Change Your Attachment Style. Do You Feel Needy with One Person and Apathetic with Another? By Barrett Brogard from Psychology Today's blog on March 18th of 2015. I'm going to link below. So um, that has that great uh, chart that I find really helpful if you've already familiarized yourself with the types of attachment styles. Then you can look at them from an anxiety and uh, avoidance uh, paradigm. Okay, so um, from codependency and relationships, blog entry, attachment styles, what are they and how to find out yours? There are four attachment styles delineated. The secure, the preoccupied, the dismissive, and the fearful avoidance. So just like the one in the previous that we were talking about. And a chart is provided in this um, blog entry include, that includes the conflict behavior, emotional expression, self-disclosure, and social skill styles of each of these four. While the preoccupied style is described as demanding, dominating, nagging, and whining, the fearful style is described as passive and accommodating. So I'm putting those at two opposite ends. Preoccupied styles are prone to high levels of self-disclosure that may be inappropriate or discriminate, while fearful indiscriminate, while fearful styles inhibit negative expression of emotion and have low levels of self-disclosure. Okay, so think about that, that difficulty in a relationship. The preoccupied style is described as overly sensitive and having difficulty controlling the expression, while the fearful style has trouble being assertive and exhibits lack of fluency and longer response times. So taking all of this information into consideration, it becomes understandable why so many relationships don't work out. Imagine you enjoy discussing every detail of your relationship because your style is preoccupied, but being in a relationship with someone who is dismissive or avoidant. This would feel like you were being treated as if your feelings don't matter, and to the other person it might actually become a uh, turn off, and they might become more avoidant and maybe even fearful. So this would be particularly difficult, uh, or even a pairing, um, so even more difficult would probably be two avoidance trying to have a relationship. I tend to be avoidant. I've had this experience myself and it's just kind of like sad because you can't build anything when two people are having trouble uh, letting their guard down and trusting each other. And even the communication ability of two avoidant people may be so um, underdeveloped because avoidance may not have that language to uh, assert what they need uh, to avoid it. People in a relationship can be really difficult. I've experienced that. Um, and then there's even a pairing between, you can imagine, a preoccupied and a fearful person, which could become highly dysfunctional if the fearful person begins to accommodate every need of the preoccupied mate. You could see how that could become a completely codependent situation. So anyway, I'm sharing all of this with you because I have a lot of reactions um, along the spectrum from my viewers, and I think a lot of young men are looking for older women uh, not so much to offer something themselves, but to take the learning experience from the older woman. And my question has always been, what are you offering in return? And I think that... and. You know, I'm going to do a video on how not to approach cougars. 
uh, because I think that if you know yourself and you've done self-reflection, it will come naturally to you how to approach cougars. There is no magic formula on how to bag a cougar, okay? Um, you have to know yourself. You're dealing with women who have been through life experiences that have shaped them and caused them to hopefully reflect on their lives. <clears throat> and what are you bringing to the table? The least you can bring to the table is an understanding of your attachment style so that you would know if you're compatible with another person and if they can meet your needs and if you can meet their needs, okay? So um, I would say a lot of older women have dealt with their attachment style difficulties. Uh, I have heard some complaints from men that older women will tend to complain about their past relationships. That's a character flaw that I think is just very disrespectful to someone else and maybe those people are also lacking their understanding of how they attach to people and what went wrong because after a failed relationship you do have to do a bit of an autopsy on the situation take responsibility for how you contributed to it whether you allowed someone to uh, take advantage of you or you stayed on too long, whatever your responsibility is in that relationship, take that and take it with you into your future relationships. And attachment theory and attachment styles can give great insight to younger men who don't have the life experience yet into understanding where they came from and why it is they may feel so preoccupied about cougars or older women and I think there are a lot of them out there. I get a lot of preoccupied cubs who are I would say almost looking for a codependent relationship with a cougar and I think it's so important to emphasize to these younger men that cougars have already weeded out the men in their lives hopefully that are uh, too needy and if you don't uh, have that self-knowledge and you're preoccupied too much with the idea of, of being in a relationship with an older woman, then she's going to have to be responsible too much for your feelings and too much for uh, the relationship. So it's kind of like hang on loosely but don't let go. You know, I think that old rock and roll song applies. And secure attachments can be attained in adulthood uh, where there's low anxiety and low avoidance and problems are discussed as they arise. And this is what we should all strive for is to have secure attachments or at least to know if we have a certain uh, dysfunctional attachment style what we need in our relationships to accommodate that and how to be ethical in our dating. But I think a lot of um, cubs are not being ethical in how they approach older women and I will discuss that in another video and I'm hoping that this discussion on attachment theory will help some of these cubs who don't understand older women to get an idea of the weight of responsibility of self-knowledge and the painful experience of having bad relationships not work out and not expect older women to just be completely open to meeting a cub with any old pickup line. Um, that's not going to work. So do your homework and learn what you want from relationships and uh, what you would like in an older woman. And you know, you can find an older woman that might be wanting to be in a um, uh, a, a fearful and preoccupied relationship so that she can accommodate all your uh, preoccupations. But that's not exactly a healthy recipe and um, there can be a large emotional price to pay for that over time when you're in a dysfunctional relationship. So I hope this video has helped and my next video will be on how not to approach cougars. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!